James Cameron's Avatar was a gargantuan box office record breaker that introduced us to the vast and mysterious world of Pandora. Naturally, the film and its universe are crammed with a ton of awesome easter eggs and hidden secrets. Let's jump in and explore. In the movie, Sam Worthington plays Jake Sully, a paraplegic marine who finds himself on the planet Pandora and in the skin of a humanoid Na'vi hybrid avatar. He quickly finds himself torn between his orders as a marine and his growing love for the Na'vi tribe and their way of life. Pay attention to the scenes where Jake is in his human form. What you see are not actor Sam Worthington's real legs, but instead prosthetic casts of a true paraplegic with atrophied limbs. Sam's real legs were either hidden back with his wheelchair or digitally removed in post-production to complete the authentic effect, just like they did to Lt. Dan and Forrest Gump, but on a whole new level. We think you'll agree, it's quite convincing. Stick around for more Avatar secrets and easter eggs. Pandora is a planet filled with breathtaking landscapes and fantastical creatures like the panther-like Thanator and the Palais, Pandora's equivalent of a horse, but listen closely to the sounds they make. If they sound familiar, it's because the sound effects used for these otherworldly animals are recycled from another groundbreaking creature feature, Jurassic Park. The Thanator's roar was taken from the T-Rex, while the Palais barks are Velociraptor sound samples. Also take a listen to the viper wolves as they hunt Jake. When they're not growling or hissing, they bark exactly like hyenas. <laughs> It's amazing to realize the details that make Pandora seem otherworldly are really quite down to earth. Stick around, you'll have to study this next scene very closely to see the hidden detail. Take a look at the briefing room in the first scene with Colonel Quaritch. The back wall is a giant window pane with blinds, and there's a metal panel in the top left corner. Does it look familiar to you? That's because it resembles the American flag. The panel even has a 50 engraved into it to represent the flag's 50 stars. With Quaritch holding court over his men, the scene is reminiscent of the opening scene in the Academy Award-winning film Patton, starring George C. Scott. However, the subliminal use of the American flag in this case might be less than patriotic, according to this next piece of trivia. Early in the film's release, director James Cameron took fire from critics who accused the film of being un-American. At a private screening, Cameron said, I don't know if there's a political agenda exactly, but as an artist I felt I needed to say something about what I saw around me. I think we all need to take stewardship of our planet. Still, it's a hard point to debunk when your main bad guy is a marine colonel. Here's another detail you likely missed about the colonel. When Colonel Quaritch makes a deal with Jake, he mentions that being on Pandora made him feel like a shavetail Louie. What is a shavetail Louie, you ask? Shavetail was a term used by U.S. cavalry regiments in the 19th century. New cavalry troopers were given horses with shaved tails. This let other troopers know that the rider was dangerously inexperienced and should be given extra space during training. Louis is simply a nickname for a lieutenant, so Shavetail Louis equals an inexperienced lieutenant. For a film set in the distant future of 2154, the colonel is obviously extremely old school. Keep watching, there are more secrets to uncover. When the team of scientists catch wind the colonel's plans to exploit Jake's Navi intel, they decide to move their operations up to the Hallelujah Mountains, the legendary floating mountains of Pandora. But did you know these mountains were inspired by an actual, real place right here on the planet? That's right, they take their look from the mountains around Zhengjiajia in China. And thanks to the popularity of the movie, the real national park has actually been renamed Avatar Hallelujah Mountain, a case of life imitating art. The park sees upward of 30 million tourists every year. Keep watching for more secrets of Pandora. When we first meet Dr. Grace Augustine, played by Sigourney Weaver, she's coming out of the Avatar Link session and barks for a cigarette. We've seen Sigourney Weaver smoke as Ellen Ripley in another James Cameron classic, Aliens, but this time around the cigarette isn't hazardous to the actor's health, because the cigarette isn't there at all. Weaver's smoking a computer-generated cigarette. On the Blu-ray release of the film, you can see a scene of Weaver in the special features before the cigarette and smoke were added. Cameron claimed in an interview that he added in the detail of Grace's vice to represent individuals who are addicted to something like video games, just like in the world of the movie where people can become addicted to being an avatar. And here's another Weaver-related easter egg. When we see Grace for the first time in her avatar form, she approaches Jake wearing a Stanford tank top. Sigourney Weaver had this detail added in tribute to her alma mater, Stanford, where she graduated from in 1972. Avatar might not be a comedy, but this next detail might make you chuckle a little. When Jake is examining his ponytail before lights out, Dr. Augustine tells him, don't play with that, you'll go blind. 
This joke clues the viewers into the uh, intimate nature of the Navi tale. We'll just leave it at that. Suffice it to say, there are important and varied uses for the tale, from connecting with their trusted animal counterparts to, um, uh, let's move on to the next Easter egg, shall we? Inspiration for Pandora's many alien creature designs come from the exotic and rare animals right here on Earth. For instance, the spiral-shaped plant that recoils at Jake's touch was inspired by an actual underwater organism, lovingly referred to as the Christmas tree worm, a marine invertebrate that lives in coral. Design ideas for life on Pandora doesn't stop at organisms. Check out this next design detail. Of course, we've already been introduced to the Pale, but another iconic animal in the world of Pandora is the ally of the Navi hunter, the flying Ikron. Both Pale and Ikron have something in common. Look closely at where and how they breathe. This design, seen on the larger animals of Pandora, was inspired by the air intakes on the sides of sports cars. This next Easter egg might be hard to spot, even for Avatar superfans. When Grace and Norm are taking root samples on the first trip to Pandora, look closely at Norm's cap. It's green with random white dots on the front. Turns out there's nothing random about them. The dots are actually braille for the number 1969. Number 1969 is an important year in human history. It was the year humans first landed on the moon. So actually quite appropriate for a movie all about travel to another celestial body. More fun and secrets are just ahead. One of the more infamous aspects in the movie is the element known as unobtainium, a highly profitable resource found on Pandora that the military will stop at nothing to obtain. The mineral's name might seem a little on the nose at best, certainly uninspired compared to the rest of the creations on display in the movie. What happened? Did the filmmaker's well of creativity dry up? Not at all. Truth is, unobtainium is a term that has been used as far back as the 1950s. In the aerospace industry, unobtainium refers to a hypothetical material that fulfills every requirement and solves every problem, but it is super expensive and violates the laws of physics. The term was also used in the 2003 science fiction movie The Core, where the hull of the submersible vessel The Virgil was made of unobtainium to withstand high heat and pressure. Unobtainium was also used for the sake of anti-gravity in the multiplayer game Skyrates. Unobtainium sounds pretty fantastic. I wonder if you can order it online. Check out this next bit of behind-the-scenes info. As Jake Sully learns of the ways of the Na'vi, we see him struggling to grasp their language. Did you know that the Na'vi language was created entirely from scratch? James Cameron hired linguist Dr. Paul R. Frommer to create a language that would be easy for actors to pronounce. Frommer created about 1,000 words inspired by the Maori language of New Zealand. Funny enough, in preparation for his role, Sam Worthington, an Australian, said in an interview that it was easier for him to learn the Navi language than the American accent. There's still more Avatar secrets ahead. Avatar took audiences to a world they'd never seen before. But the story might sound familiar to you. The movie has been compared with the Oscar-winning Dances with Wolves and the animated Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. But maybe the closest connection can be made with the Disney film Pocahontas, a romanticized retelling of early American history. Jake Sully's initials are JS, the same as John Smith, and like John Smith, Sully is part of a group of outsiders who invade a new world. He falls in love with a member of the native tribe and takes on the tribe's customs. The two movies seem so similar, in fact, mock trailers began showing up on the internet with lines from Avatar over images of Pocahontas and vice versa. But could Avatar actually be a stolen idea from decades ago? The answer is just ahead. Back in 2014, an article posted online entitled 1960s Avatar TV Show claimed that the film stole from a 1963 science fiction television series of the same name. Jake Sully was played by none other than Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner. The article even contained pictures of Shatner in blue makeup. So why haven't you heard of the show? Because it didn't really exist. Gotcha! Just keeping you on your toes. It didn't take long for the pictures to be debunked and the article to be exposed as the hoax it was. Let this be a lesson. If you're going to create fake news, steer clear of resources from franchises with a fanbase as vast and loyal as Star Trek. Check out this piece of real news. Avatar's influence was felt all over the world. It was so strong, in fact, director James Cameron was invited by tribal leaders in Brazil to fight the construction of a proposed dam that would put their way of life in jeopardy. Pictures of James Cameron's visit show him like a real-life Jake Sully, complete with spear and war paint. Speaking of war paint, feast your eyes on this next Easter egg. In the final showdown between the Navi and the Marines, pay close attention to Natiri's war paint. Notice anything interesting? She has a handprint over her heart. One of the distinguishing features that set the human-linked avatars apart from the Navi is that the Navi only have four fingers. This is a cool, subtle detail to clue us into the fact that the five-finger handprint over Natiri's heart is Jake's. 
If you like this easter egg, you're gonna love the next one. During the final battle, Jake hops into Quaritch's gunship in an attempt to blow it up. Quaritch pushes the control stick to tilt the ship, forcing Jake to slide off its surface. He quickly grabs onto a missile to stop his fall. If this moment happened to give you a strange sense of deja vu, you're not alone. That's because something similar happened in another James Cameron movie, True Lies. In that film, Harry Tasker, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, uses the control stick to tilt his Harrier jet and thwart the terrorist Aziz, played by Art Malik. Aziz loses balance, slides down the wing of the jet, and his vest catches on a missile. Guess we'll have to see James Cameron's next movie to find out if this aerial sequence becomes a recurring trademark. I hope you liked the video and found some things you missed the first time in Avatar. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.